Hello and welcome to Script Tonight React. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season three, episode nine of Fargo. It's the penultimate episode. I remember what a massive episode this was in season two and it was also fairly big in season one. So my bar is fairly high. I gotta say the last few episodes have really, this thing has gone off the rails. <laughs> And I, I don't mean as a production, I mean the plot is just insane. We've done a time jump, Ray is dead, Sai is incapacitated in a coma, I think probably as good as dead, I don't think Sai is coming back. Emmett has completely lost his shit and has decided he's he's being haunted by Ray, so he's gonna... <laughs> He's going to dob himself into the police a bit like kind of he's been Scrooged. But he's a scro So that's what's going on. I am absolutely convinced that Nikki and maybe Mr. Wrench are behind the haunting of Emmett. I don't know how Varga is going to react to this. I'd imagine he would just want to snuff Emmett out. Because ultimately, it's just numbers, it's a numbers game. So it'd be quite funny if maybe the Goldfarb deal ends up saving Varga rather than saving Emmett. And that maybe Goldfarb goes into business with VM Varga and has no such moral qualms. That I would find quite satisfyingly bizarre. And of course, all the while in the background, we've had Gloria and Winnie attempting to shut this thing down, and they are now going to have Emmett tie all these things together. I have to say, I thought at the point of the prison transport attack, Gloria and Winnie were going to be vindicated, but it feels like kind of life is just gone on we've bypassed the bit where i thought we were going to get a big mayor culpa from uh idiot chief <laughs> and i should just say before we go into this episode there may well be some kind of background noise we've got a quite a big stormy day happening here when i'm filming this episode which is perfect to go along with the action but may well impinge every now and again with the odd sound so apologize for that <clears throat> This episode is called Aporia, which is kind of like, it, it, it's twofold. It can be like an internal contradiction, genuine kind of confusion and doubt. But it can also be an expression of doubt used as a kind of like a rhetorical device. So you don't actually feel that level of doubt, but you state it to make a point. I find teachers are great at this. You know, imagine when you're a kid and, you, and like you've got a school project to do and you're like, I'm going to build a NASCAR. And the teacher would say, hmm, I'm not entirely sure that that would be the right approach. Do you think? And that's a way of getting, basically they're saying that's a fucking ridiculous idea. You can't build a NASCAR in tech class. Varga does use Eporia quite a lot if you the way he expresses himself certainly to Emmett and kind of people under him when they give him a no he goes into well that's very interesting but I can't stand it but yeah we want to get into this episode so without further ado let's have at it Oh shit, is he supposed to be there? No. Oh my god! The milkshake from the diner in the Waffle Hut in um... 2, isn't it? Ah! Oh. <gasps> what a waste of a milkshake too. Are we 
killing all the sussies. I don't understand. It's answer is time, Gloria. There's three St. Cloud metros near your office. Why come all the way down here? You give me your card. Hmm? Our dad, he had this old Mercedes diesel. You could hear it on the cum. Not out of the car, 10 seconds. When down he goes, flat in his face. One minute he's waving hello, the next just drops like, like the lights go out. Oh my God. I killed him. Your dad? Ray. First I tricked him. Then I killed him. Killed him where? In the den of his shithole apartment. My dad gave me a car, but I wanted the stamps. And Ray, like I said, he was a chubby kid. 15 years old, never been laid, never even felt up a girl. So I let it slip. How this car, well, it's like a magnet, isn't it? Like catnip for kitty cats. And if you turn up to school Monday and this thing, well, it's a done deal. And now he's begging me. Emmett, please, take the damn stamps. Give me the car like it's his idea. What's that old quote there? The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. 30 years I've been killing him. That was just when he fell. Jesus. Oh, just stop it. I'm not sure one's going to do it. I got another picked out closer to the precinct. What matters is he signs those papers. Can we get him out of that precinct before he gets too chatty? I can monitor the radio to see if there's a workaround to the new security. Now, let's move shop. Go to stage four. No mistakes. What? <clears throat> Where's Carl Weathers? understand why they killed a guy called Marvin Stussy. What does he have to do with anything? Yes! Oh, shit. oh my god. Oh my god! God, that was beautiful. Whoa! Oh my god, it's their home! It's their office! They call their whole office? Fuck me! Oh my god. I'm so happy about this. Vargas, how do you like them apples? Bad news, boss. <gasps> Bingo. Bingo. Mr. Cayman Islands XXJJ one nine four six two SK. What do you want? Two million. Lobby of the Clarion Hotel, 4 p.m. Come alone. Oh, he's pissed. Which makes me really happy. Hello? Yeah. Oh, Winnie's at the... Hello. Yeah, it's me. It's Gloria. Her phones never work. Guy's throat was cut. They found a piece of glass there on the linoleum. What guy? Uh, the dentist lives on a nice, quiet street. Get this, his name... Marvin Stussy. Okay, then. Okay, then. Wife found him in the kitchen. Not another Stussy. 
Prince? Glued again? Yeah. We got a good one on the fridge. What the fuck? What's his name again? Stussy. George Stussy. What the fuck? Donnie! What is going on? It this one's asphyxiation, just like Burgle's dad. I'm thinking he's alternating his kills to throw us off the scent. Who? Killer. Killer. Singular. But it was Maurice Cafe, wasn't it? It was, we saw it. This guy must really hate Stussies. Chief, I never said she saw a maroon Cadillac hauling ass out of here right before the wife got home. Pools. Why are they going around? I can't think why they would be going around re-killing Ray and Ennis over, but with other people. So Marvin Stussy, Glass to the Neck. Can't remember there's George Stussy, asphyxiated with the glue. They're going to do another Stussy now with Glass? And we know it's the little Chinese guy. But why? And is he doing that on orders, or is 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 he lost it? <laughs> that is a riddle, because I do not have a clue why this is happening. Okay, take me on a journey, now, Holly. Play. You get a plate number. You betcha. Yeah, this season. Time. What? But it wasn't him though. Oh my god, is this golf for? So this was a business dinner? Well, I'm new in town and uh, Buck agreed to introduce me to some people. New from where? Doesn't matter. St. Louis. But that's not true. And you're aware what happened to Mr. Felt subsequently? When it rains, it pours. Sometimes it drizzles. It's a saying. <laughs> and how soon after, um, how incident, soon after? Incident! After. Come on! Excuse me. Did you tell her, Donnie? Well, I solved it. <laughs> Bill Timer and Eden Valley in the dead P.O. Don't even. I got Dear the part by King and Holding, he confessed. The both? No, the... We already established there's proof Maurice oh, and Faye killed... Pause, I got it! So they staged two similar murders so that they would think that it was not Emma, it was someone else. Oh my god, that's such a stupid plan, it didn't even occur to me. But of course Idiot Chief would fall for it. Oh my fucking Christ. Play. Both surnames, Dusty, both. Picture perfect doubles of your earlier crimes. Think. Just listen. When we rested this piece of shit, get some mail in his trunk from your stepdad's house. Yeah, that's right. And a framed photo of Ray and his scofflaw girlfriend from their domicile. Also, the trunk full of broken glass, blood, super glue. Those are facts. I got. Hold on. I got different facts. Maurice LaFay's fingerprints. He confessed. I my guy, in the car ride over, all four murders. Named Stussy. Used to diddle him in his closet after lights out. Chief. Mm-mm. Don't fall for it, you stupid prick! He feels guilty all those years fighting with his loser brother. Finally, guilt gets to him, and he comes. You believe it, because you got a hard on for the guy, and you want to believe it. OK? Cut him loose, deputy. We got our man. Motherfucker. God, she's just... Can you imagine how terrifying this would be? How... You sound insane. How soon after Mr. Feltz did Mr. Stussy arrive? 
Five minutes, maybe. In your statement, you said a half an hour. Oh, well, I'm sure that's what it was then. You know how the memory can play tricks. That's another saying. Are you covering for him? I'm gonna go. If you have any more questions, let my lawyer know. That's just absurd. You would, you would have to be an idiot, Chief, to believe that story. I literally didn't even think of it because it was so ridiculous. Loved you in Death of a Salesman. <laughs> that is a one million dollar idea. Marvelous! You know, it was beautiful. I'm going to have some tea. Would you like some tea? No. No, thanks. It was the Wildcat Regional. Third runner-up. Me and Ray. That's why we're here. I've never understood this repulsive affinity for playing games. Oh, Bridge isn't a game. 58 octillion possible deals. Then you got the human factor. Symbiosis with your partner. The cheats and tells of your opponents. Strategy. That was my strength. I'm sure I can't Don't. tempt you. Don't drink the fucking tea. You got it. I'd like to offer you something else instead. A job. I work for a company called Narwhal. No, you don't. He does. You tell people you work for a company called Narwhal because people look past middle management. But I know a boss when I see one. Nikki! Woo! You just added a zero to your salary. There's a 60% chance that briefcase is full of your dirty underwear. And since I don't see your associate, I figure he's out there somewhere watching us. Maybe even with a rifle. Go on. And if I brought the books and the hard drives with me, you're going to give your man a signal, and he's going to take the shot. This is a public place with a lot of witnesses. And you're a pretty distinctive-looking guy. Am I? Look around. <laughs> they got, like, ten of them walking around in there. That is so weird. I'm guessing the Wildcat Regional was an amateur affair. Semi-professional. <gasps> yes! Fucking kill him! See, you got cocky. Forgot to show all the pieces on the board. The cards I'm not showing. So now it's just me and you. And I want my money. You just added another two zeros to your salary. <laughs> I feel I ought to punish you for not doing what you were told. So maybe I share one of the hard drives with the police. can't win this game, you do realize that. I thought you didn't play games. I didn't have any feeling about you before, but now I'm starting to really dislike you. <laughs> yes! I'll give you till tomorrow to get my money.
She has never been more beautiful than at that moment. Got married straight out of high school to a guy I knew since fifth grade summer camp. <sighs> summer wedding. Last year, my husband phones me at work, tells me he's got a boyfriend named Dale. What? Says they're moving in together. Says he's sorry. He loves me, but not like that. You think the world is something, then it turns out to be something else. He ran her at work? You're free to go. What? Since you confessed, two other fellas named Stussy have been murdered. Are you saying that people are dead because they've got my name? <laughs> Yes. But the real beauty of it is, they gave us a suspect and he confessed. He? Confessed to all four murders. Who is he? The master pulling the strings. That fellow I met in your office who said he sold ladies' shoes. This is him, right? His work. Yes! I swear to God. I'm sorry. You have zero balls, Emmett. Zero balls. Seriously? They used the little man? This is some bullshit. They're just throwing it in her face. You smug little prick. She'll get you. I hope. My god, are they really gonna take us into the finale unresolved? I thought this was gonna wrap up like last the last couple of times. The problem is not that there is evil in the world, the problem is that there is good. Because otherwise who would care? With all the romance a two lumberjacks chopping wood. <laughs> Thank God for KY. Oh, you know, before you got here, I was thinking, see, Ennis, my stepfather, he wrote these space books, and I read one of them. And it was about this android, I guess you call it, who, his master died, and he wandered the universe alone for two million years. Jeez. Yeah. And all he could say was, I can help. But he couldn't, or at least he never did. But he kept on saying it, I can help. And he kept on failing. Which is, if I had to define it, the way I feel most days. Oh, man. Well, there's the fact that automatic doors never open for me. <laughs> and the sensors on, like, the, the sink or the soap dispenser never sense me. And when I make a call, no one can ever hear me. So I got this theory <laughs> in private that I don't actually exist. Here's what I think you need. Stand up. Why? I want to show you something. Better get you the ladies and clean yourself up because we got some heavy drinking to do and I can't have people thinking I forced you. <laughs> Thanks. You got the bond of the uniform. Plus, I like you. I like you too. Oh, man. She better live. If anybody dies now, I'm about to lose my shit. Make 
make me want to cry. No, it's the IRS guy. Mm, you've got mail, Mr. Dollard. Is it going to be all the papers? Is this the real books? No, don't end! Oh. The tide is now turning in the right direction for my personal preference. I need to see I think I'm going to need from the finale. Here's what I want for Vian Varga. Not only do I want him to go to jail, but I want his face on the cover of every newspaper in the world. Because he prides himself on being invisible. I want him made visible. Everybody can see him and how disgusting he is. Idiot chief loses his job and Gloria Burgle gets to take over because she was right all along and he's a dick. I need Winnie Lopez to get pregnant and a time jump to where she's got the kids and the family and they're all having like a barbecue with Gloria Burgle who's now got a partner and they're really happy. I can't see how Emmett Stussy is going to make it out of this. He's either going to become irrelevant or he might die because this show doesn't tend to reward people with moral ambiguities. I think that was actually the best episode of the season for character development. I was actually finding myself having little intrusive thoughts while it was on of like, why have they waited until now to like develop all of these characters at the same time right before it finishes? I wish they'd have did told this story in a slightly different way I think because I've just now really bonded with Gloria it's felt like she's been exactly the same since episode one until now now she's changed but there wasn't a kind of gradual that's not what it's felt like to me anyway but that conversation with her and Winnie her her actually saying you know I, I have this theory on the quiet that I don't actually exist I just wonder how many people that's true for and it breaks my heart like it absolutely breaks my heart people who feel so unseen it really really landed me and how she made the parallels between the little robot in planet y and her and her and her own life i hope that by the end of this show we've only got an hour left that she will i don't even want her to find peace I want her to find fucking everything in the world on a stick. That's what I want for Gloria Burgle. To have some real excitement, proper passionate love. You know, go and be ridiculous, laugh her ass off. Just the whole everything is what I want for Gloria Burgle. Ditto Winnie. I think they make a marvellous pair. Something about Winnie really reminds me of Molly. Nikki and Mr Wrench tearing it up that was amazing that scene in the hotel where she was explaining bridge and what the chances of him acting one way or another were and she was clearly 10 steps ahead of him and you thought for a moment when he said bridge is an amateur game or whatever and i don't know if nikki put on that moment of doubt because it looked real i'm not entirely sure it was I think she was playing him. But we thought for a moment, shit, she's over egg the pudding. They've given us this little bit of joy and then they're going to yank it away. But he was shook by the end of that meeting because he didn't know about Mr. Wrench. He didn't, like, they knew. She's, like, working this whole thing out, thinking about motives and, you know, what... It's always... It's, it's such a long strategy game when you start trying to think out how someone's going to react because it's not only about working out how they're going to react because you've got to have all the potential reactions and then you've got all of the potential outcomes of those reactions triggering further reactions it's a, 
This is why I don't play strategy games. I'm really poor at them. But Nikki is great at it. And they just marched out of there. Like a, it was like Reservoir Dogs. It was beautiful. And he was shook. There's no two ways about it. Vargo was shook by the end of that. He's pissed. You know, she had him comforting on the toilet. So, like, not even a gap between the eating and the shitting and the puking. He's, he's just on the toilet. It's just disgusting. I think Vargo's going to come undone. No. Damn it. Someone's rebuilding our fence outside and they've now chosen this moment, this precise moment, to start drilling. So I'm going to wrap this thing up. I like the way that episode teed us up for the finale. I don't know how this thing is going to wrap up, but I've given you my wish list. So until the next time, bye bye.